Just south of Penticton, in the hills above Skaha Lake, is the world-renowned climbing area known as Skaha Bluffs. Today, we've hiked up to the top of Diamondback, where I'm going to get a chance to put on a harness and a rope and uh, try my hand at climbing around. Yeah, I was kind of shocked I looked up. Russ Turner of Skaha Rock Adventures says the Skaha Bluffs have become a mecca for climbers from all over the world. In 93, when the first guidebook came out, there was 120 routes in that guidebook. And uh, now there's be over 1,000 routes in the area. In 93, we guesstimated 3,000 user visits using the area annually. Uh, last year, there were 45,000. Despite the lure of a summer day and a full parking lot, the vast climbing area seemed almost deserted. There are some crags that are very popular. They're 20 minutes walk from the parking lot. But if you're willing to walk that extra 10 minutes, you can get into an area like we are, and there's no one around. We got it all to ourselves, which is one of the beauties of Skaha. There's probably over 40 different walls you could go and visit. So Diamondback, that's uh, that rock sticking up right there. That's what I'm going to go climb. <laughs> so if you want to step through the waist belt. Some of the reasons for the area's popularity include an abundance of great routes, a long climbing season thanks to the Okanagan weather, and ease of access since it became a provincial park. And we're going to work from this ledge here and we're going to have you rappel down and then we're going to send you up another climb. Just from the climb. So we're going, we're going down over here. Yep. 40 meters into space. 40 meters. Okay, good. So we want to make sure this stuff's solid. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. We couldn't have picked a better guy to make sure the stuff was solid. Russ started his climbing school here in 1993 and has grown the business steadily over those 18 years. Rope! Good. Okay. <laughs> There's a long pause. <laughs> a, a long pause there. There's a little pause, yes. <laughs> this is the part where I step backwards up of the 40 meter cliff. <laughs> yes, you're right. Hands on Good me. luck. Okay, right, here we go. Oh, looking great, Doug. Good body position. Perfect. Feet flat against the wall. Nice job. Excellent. Perfect. And then just get to trust that why don't we take our hands off and our hands off. Yep, let the prostate do its job. Just to show that demonstrate that it does work. Oh boy. <laughs> breathe now. Okay. Alright. Oh wow, you can see right down to the lake. Oh, it's incredible. I can't emphasize the training um, enough in, in the sense that you, you can get out here and check out the sport with some friends, but um, you may not be learning all the, the proper techniques and, and skills required to do it safely. So I strongly recommend that, that you um, either get trained or, or make sure you get out with someone who has the experience to train you and, and teach you safely. Okay, Doug, so we're going to climb a route called Ready to Strike. Now you're saying this is Ready to Strike because the rattlers. The original party who put this route up actually, as they were cleaning the route, they looked down below and there was a rattlesnake going into their pack. So the name was aptly called Ready to Strike. You can on that hole. You're doing great, Doug. Good job. Cool. I start up the rock. It's been years since my last climb and I find myself struggling. My mind unsettled, unsure of my holds, and worried about falling. Oh. Which is, of course, what happens when you dwell on it too much. It's something that just about anyone can do. It, it's all really, um, a lot of it just comes down to your, your mental focus and, and accepting the fact that you know, you're know you on a rope, you can trust the rope systems and they do work and, and it's a safe sport when it's done correctly. So I think people are realizing how accessible the sport is. After the fall, strangely enough, my nerves are gone. I slip back into the rhythm of climbing, feeling my way up, trusting the tiny holes. The crux or most difficult part of this climb is getting past this daunting overhanging block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. You got it. Cool. <laughs> and you get a great rest in a couple of feet up to There's two sides to it. There's the physical enjoyment where you're getting some exercise, but there's also the mental um, exercise that's going on as well. And if, if you come out to the crag with something in your mind and it's weighing on you, I can guarantee by your second or third climb that you've forgotten all about that stuff. It's great. It just erases all those problems and worries and you're just focused on what's in front of you and it's really good that way. It's good for the head. Ah! Something moving in that crack. <laughs> Sometimes we'll find bats or frogs in cracks. Yeah, something, something ran over my fingers. Oh! <laughs> Hard to say what that could be. <laughs> yeah. Ready to strike lives up to its name. <laughs> oh, let's not say that. <laughs> I didn't hear a rattle. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That's right. 
I think that's it. Okay. Woo! I got gotcha. you. All right. Oh, and the view. You get to see the lake when you make the top. Cool. For more information, visit skaharockclimbing.com. The Skaha Rock Climb Guidebook is available online or at local climbing supply stores. For Shaw TV from the Skaha Bluffs, I'm Doug Brown. Well, that was a good day. Yeah, it was great.